lecture series of optical instrumentation. Uh, in our previous lecture, we discussed about uh, doped insulator lasers or solid state lasers. So, in this lecture also, we shall continue our discussion about lasers and we shall discuss uh, remaining classes of lasers. So, next is semiconductor lasers. Semiconductor lasers are also solid lasers, the active material is also solid in semiconductor lasers and not very different from light emitting diode. We have discussed diodes, LEDs uh, in our previous classes. So, like diodes, there are p-n junction diode in semiconductor lasers also, they are also made up of p-n junction materials. But to obtain laser, we need population inversion. We need a condition that is called population inversion and optical feedback. We also need optical feedback. So, how population inversion is achieved? The amount of doping is increased if we want to use semiconductor material as lasers. So, N type and P type semiconductors, they are very heavily doped. Okay. So, when uh, we have heavily doped uh, semiconductor materials, uh, the Fermi level, they lie within the material. Population inversion is achieved by forward biasing a junction formed from very heavily doped and NP materials. So, what happens in heavily doped materials? In heavily doped N type material, the Fermi level lies in conduction band. So, in uh, heavily doped N type material, the Fermi level lies in conduction band. Similarly, in heavily doped P type semiconductor, the Fermi level lies in valence band. Fermi level lies in valence band. And when we forward bias such P n junction, we achieve a condition of population inversion. As we can see in this diagram, so this is uh, energy gap you can see, this is for P type material okay, and this is for N type material. What is happening in, I type, in N type material? The Fermi level is in the conduction band and in P type material, the Fermi level is in the valence band and this is the junction region. So, if we do not apply any forward bias, so no electron and hole can combine. As soon as we apply, apply forward bias, what happens? Uh, electrons from N type material and holes from P type material, they, they enter the junction region and as soon as they enter the junction region, electrons and holes recombine and they emit photons of energy H nu and this energy H nu, this is equal to this band gap energy. Okay. The junction is forward biased with a voltage equal to band gap voltage. Okay. Electron and holes are injected across the junction in sufficient number. Why in sufficient number? Because they, they, these are heavily doped N type B type materials <coughs> and electron and holes are present in uh, sufficient numbers. The concentration of electron and concentration of holes in heavily doped N type P type materials are high. Okay. This condition is sufficient to create population inversion in narrow active region. So, what happens? There is a very narrow region of junction and in this narrow region, uh, sufficient amount of electron and holes are present. So, very easily the condition of population inversion is achieved. So, that is why semiconductor lasers are highly efficient and they are extensively used. So, as you can see, this is the construction, 3D construction 
of uh, this is heavily doped p type material this is heavily doped n type material this is junction reason it is also called active reason okay the thickness is very less so over here we have forward bias this junction so this is p type we have connected this is p type we have connected it with positive terminal of the battery this is n type we have connected it with negative terminal of the battery so what happens the holes from p side will cross the junction the electrons from n side will also cross the junction and they they will enter this junction region okay so this is gallium arsenide okay which material is used gallium arsenide okay when the injected carrier concentration is large enough the stimulated emission can exceed the absorption that is what we need okay so when stimulated emission is higher than the amount of absorption then we get lasing action and this can uh, this can be achieved if injected carrier concentration is high okay so due to this we can again have optical gain can we can achieve optical gain in the active region and due to this optical gain more number of photons will be created okay so this is the construction of gallium arsenide homo junction semiconductor diode laser okay so they are also called diode lasers and what is this this is a homo junction homo junction lasers are less efficient in comparison to hetero junction lasers why because you can see the distribution of optical field so over there this is loss this is loss and gain we only get gain in the junction region and this is the width of junction region okay so this is n type this is p type this is your junction region and this is refractive index of the junction region okay narrow thickness d of the junction region causes a large beam divergence okay so this is due to narrow thickness of the junction region which causes poor confinement of optical radiations in the gain region we want to confine the optical radiations in the gain region so that we get more optical gain okay laser oscillations occur when round trip gain exceeds the total losses over the same distance so we can we can overcome these losses up to some extent if we use hetero junction lasers so what is hetero junction we have already discussed in leds and we already know from our previous years of btech what is hetero junction the threshold current density for homo junction lasers is very large due to poor optical and carrier confinement okay so we need to provide more current so the current density is high to get more laser if you want to increase the intensity of laser we have to give more current okay higher efficiency can be achieved by using hetero junctions okay so higher efficiency we can achieve by simply using hetero junctions instead of homo junctions and it also reduces reduces the threshold current density it also reduces the threshold current density so you can see this is one hetero junction over here n type gallium arsenide this is p type gallium arsenide and this is the layer of gallium aluminium arsenide okay so this is hetero junction because this is gallium arsenide and this is gallium aluminium arsenide fine so due to this what happens the thickness of junction region increases this is double hetero junction you can see there are th three junctions over here this is gallium arsenide n type this is heavily doped gallium aluminium arsenide 
again this is gallium arsenide and again this is gallium aluminium arsenide these are p types these are n types okay n p but materials are different so this is called double heterojunction let us see the distribution and uh, refractive index okay so this is single heterojunction in single heterojunction you can see this is the energy bands energy band diagram of a single heterojunction and the distribution of radiations with respect to refractive index over here the refractive index is changing rapidly due to heterojunction and that is why the the losses are less in this area in this area losses are same and the gain is confined in the junction region okay so this is this gives her gives us more efficiency if we use double heterojunction like this that we have already seen this is the uh, this is the energy band diagram of double heterojunctions okay again the refractive index is changing rapidly and radiation field distribution you can see it is narrow gain is more and losses are less and again the thickness is very less around 1 micrometer so heterojunction semiconductor uh, lasers are more efficient than homojunction semiconductor lasers mainly heterojunction lasers are used homojunction lasers are not used these days okay next is gas lasers okay now the active medium is in gaseous state that is why they are called gas lasers gas lasers are most widely used type of lasers most widely and they are available for different ranges like low power the range from low power to very high power low power laser is helium neon laser is a very low power laser it is used in uh, laboratories okay and co2 lasers are very high power lasers they are used in industrial applications so high so we shall discuss three type of gas lasers atomic lasers uh, helium neon laser argon laser and co2 laser helium neon lasers are atomic lasers because the active material is in atomic states argon laser is ion laser because the active material is in gaseous state but it is in ionic form okay and co2 laser is called is a molecular laser because the active material is a molecule of carbon dioxide okay these are inert gases they are in atomic state this is in ionic state and this is in molecular state okay so first let us start with helium neon laser in helium neon laser the active material is a mixture of helium and neon that is why helium neon laser 10 part helium and one part neon 10 parts of helium are mixed with one part of neon okay neon is the active material i mean active material is a mixture of helium and neon but the energy levels of neon will be used for laser transitions fine neon provides energy levels for laser transition then what is the use of helium helium atoms have an important role in providing excitation to helium at neon atoms what happens when we give energy through pumping helium atoms absorb that energy and go to excited state then they they get they collide with neon atoms they strike neon atoms neon electrons and they excite neon electrons from ground state to excited state okay so helium is used for exciting neon and then when neon atoms get excited their electrons go to a higher state and when they come back into ground state we get lasing photons through stimulated emission okay so helium atoms have important role in providing excitation mechanism for neon atoms 
what is the excitation mechanism, what is pumping mechanism? High voltage DC discharge is used for excitation and pumping. The power of this laser is small that we ha I have already told you up to only 100 milliwatts. However, the radiation is extremely useful in a wide range of applications because it is highly collimated. Highly collimated means directionality, focused at a very small area okay, and coherent. It has very extremely narrow line width. So, this is how we achieve uh, lasing action. This is the energy level diagram. Now, you can see first helium get excited by electron bombardment high uh, DC voltage discharge. Helium atom is excited. Now, helium transfers its excitation to neon through collision. So, this is the simplified energy level diagram. What happens while pumping? the electrons of helium they get excited, excitation by electron collision. Then through collision of helium and neon atoms, the neon atoms are excited, neon atoms are excited, they now they are in excited state, now they jump in ground state. When they jump in ground state, uh, we get lasing photons and there are various wavelengths we get photons of different different wavelengths we can choose from these photons using a special mechanism this is 3.39 micrometers this is 6328 angstrom this is 3390 angstrom this is 1150 angstrom so photons of different different wavelengths and after that they come to ground state through fast radiative decay Okay. So, this is the this is how we achieve lasing action in helium neon laser. This is the construction diagram, this is a tube and in this tube airtight tube, airtight container of transparent material glass and we fill this with a mixture of helium and neon again 10 parts helium, uh, 1 part neon for excitation DC discharge created by applying very high voltage, how much high around 2 to 4 kilo volts. Okay. So, over here voltage is applied cathode anode and inside this helium atoms get excited first and after that uh, they pass their excitation to neon atoms through collision and uh, this uh, mixture of gases is at very high pressure how much around 10 torrs over here uh, it is kept inside a cavity and you can see there, there is a mirror this is 100 percent reflective mirror. 100 percent reflective and this is semi reflective some light will be reflected back and some light we will get in the output. So, this is the construction diagram of helium neon laser. Next is argon lasers most powerful continuous wave lasers that are operating in visible region are inert gas ion lasers. Inert gas ion lasers. Active medium is in ionic state that is why these lasers are called ion lasers. Okay. Gas atoms are ionized by electron collision through high current discharge, through a very high current, dis current discharge. How much high? 15 to 50 amperes. In previous laser, there was DC voltage discharge of 2 to 4 kilovolts, volts. but over here there is high current discharge because we have to convert uh, inert gas atoms into ions. So, 15 to 50 ampere current is discharged through argon. Ions are further excited by electron collision. 
Okay. So, inert gas uh, ion lasers such as argon and krypton lasers are used and they are most powerful continuous wave lasers that are used in visible region. So, we shall discuss only argon laser over here. Most ion lasers dissipate huge amount of heat energy. So, that is why a cooling mechanism is needed. So, a liquid cooling mechanism is used in this argon ionic laser to dissipate large amount of heat. Okay. This is the simplified energy level diagram of argon laser. So, again this is a 4 energy level system 1, 2, 3, 4. We can see through uh, current discharge uh, ions are excited in high energy state through pumping. Uh, from high energy state they come to uh, second state and we get uh, these are the laser transitions mainly two wavelengths we are getting 488 nanometer and 514.5 nanometers. After that there is a uh, uh, decay, radiative decay and that is why there is a huge amount of heat energy because, because of this radiative decay mainly this is in the region of uh, heat waves infrared and we have to compensate this. So, we use uh, liquid cooling and these are ground states. This is the ground state for argon ion and this is the ground state for argon atom. So, again we maintain this gas in ionic state. So, over here we get it get more energy and from here it gets excited to higher energy states. So, this is simplified energy level diagram of argon laser. 10 or more laser lines are produced, but 2 are most intense. These 2 are most intense, otherwise we get uh, photons of around 10 uh, different wavelengths. Okay. This is the construction. Uh, as you can see, the tube design of argon laser is much more complicated than helium neon laser. So, this is segmented metal disc structures principally because of much higher energy required to pump the ionic levels okay, and the need to dissipate the heat that is released. Heat energy that is released, we have to dissipate that heat energy that is why these are segmented metal disc structures and also we have we need higher current discharge to maintain it in ionic state. So, these are solenoids and uh, over here this is cathode and this is anode to apply high current discharge and these are the cavities. This is a 100 percent reflective mirror and we get output from this side. Okay. So, this was all about uh, argon laser. In next lecture, we shall discuss remaining part of lasers. Thank you.